Welcome to God, Sex, and You, a daily discipleship podcast on healthy sexuality. Here's your host, Purity Pastor, Dustin Daniels. On today's show, we continue to ask that question, how did we get here? And I'm talking about the Supreme Court decision on June 26, 2015, that legalized gay marriage at the federal level. And it's so interesting as we go through this sexual revolution timeline that really started back in 1916. The question is not how did we get here, but rather how could we not get here? So let's find out. In today's podcast, we'll discuss a couple different things. Number one, what is gender identity? Number two, why are there so many gender options available? And number three, how is sexual freedom threatening your church's tax exemption status? Today's lesson is titled, The Business and the Politics of Gender Identity. What about the consequences of, of big business and economics? You guys heard about Target? So Target says that if I feel like a woman today, that I can go in and I can use the women's restroom. It's called gender identity. I, this is what they say. I feel like a woman today. So I can go in and I can literally go into the women's restroom with you and your daughter and use the restroom. I can literally go in and change in the same changing room as you. Do you want me to do that? The, the NFL, the NCAA, the NBA have pulled games and millions of dollars from South Carolina. Why? Because they won't be able to adapt to it. Because the governor refused. To, he, he had the audacity to say that men should use the men's restroom and women should use the women's restroom. Now, when we talk about transgender stuff, we have to understand and we're going to get to it here in a second. The transgender movement is another level of the LGBT. We have to understand, taking my example from all the things that I've done as an addict, is I was working from a behavior to fill a God-sized hole in my heart. I was hurting. But I didn't know how to deal with it. So I knew what made me feel better. I'll, cut, I'll take a couple of drinks, look at some porn, go to a strip club. That'll make me feel better. It just didn't last long enough. And what the transgender people are doing is, it's, once again, there's this word, a slippery slope. Well, where's the line now? If I feel like a woman, who are you to tell me that I can't feel like a woman? And, and, and that's a legitimate question because we don't know who the authority is. If the authority is in man, all bets are off. Science pretty well clarifies this period because you have the XY chromosome. You pretty much have the XY chromosome. It doesn't matter. Have you guys been on Facebook? How many gender options are there for Facebook? 20, 26, I think. Someone pull up Facebook right now and count how many gender options there are for Facebook. It's not that simple, is it? I mean, it's, it's simple when you look at God's Word. God's Word says, hey, 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 I love you guys so much that this is... Marriage. And by the way, marriage and sexuality are two sides of the same coin. And when he says, if you step outside of this, man, I love you. I love you so much. You can do what you want, but you know what? You're going to hurt yourself. But you can still do that. You can still go try and do that. According to Google, there are 58 gender options. 58 gender options. That's new. Okay, so now you can write anything else that you want in. Okay. See, 
I, I'll wait for that. I'll wait for that. Let's talk about the military. How many military folks do we have in here? One, two, three, four. Okay. Um, this next part of the lesson may make you mad, so I, I, I want to make sure that you're not carrying. <laughs> All right, so everybody move away from Ernie. <laughs> Do we know that the U.S. military now has a transgender policy? Does that make sense? Just that statement right there, does that make sense to anybody? So the, the DOD the Department of Defense, states that people who want to have a surgery to become the opposite sex will be required to get a medical statement. And basically, they are suffering from what they call gender dysphoria. Gender dysphoria says, I'm a man, but I'm trapped in a woman's body, vice versa. And what the U.S. military is now doing is if you get approved for this, that means that the military will pay for the reassignment surgery, which then makes them undeployable, which means they can't fight in the military. They now have a desk job. Politics, consequences of more politics. He has been a huge advocate of, of the transsexual revolution. And he is using what's called Title IX to um, force schools to submit to his demands. And what that means is if you uh, have a child in public school and the, the principal or the, the department doesn't um, agree with allowing men in women's restrooms and vice versa, he's going to withhold money. And it's a lot of money. The consequences of Department of Corrections. California Department of Corrections agreed in 2015 to pay for Shiloh Queen's gender assignment surgery. This man committed a murder in 1980. He's on a life sentence. He is suing California to become a woman. And he won. So our tax dollars paid for the reassignment surgery and now he is a she, and now has been moved to a woman's facility. Constitutional rights. You as pastors and leaders and, and, and uh, church administrators, this is a big deal. Religious freedom, or is it sexual freedom? That we've been talking about this whole time. Long story short, Sexual freedom is trumping your religious freedom at this point, which is based in the Constitution. So what you're seeing is uh, churches either being sued or suing for the right to actually preach Romans 1 from the pulpit. Uh, what's going on right now is is the state is going, okay, all right, pastor, so um, you've got this church, and, and the church is open to the public. Is that right? Okay. Um, that means it's open to everybody, right? Okay. So that means if a transgender person comes in, you want them there. Is that right? Okay. So, but we don't want to make them feel uncomfortable. So that means that this person has to use whatever bathroom that they want to use inside your church. Are you okay with that? Okay, well, we're going to have to sue you. You okay with that? Okay. <laughs> have a nice day. These things are happening right now. Um, D.C. Baptist Church, Calvary Baptist Church in, uh, in Washington, D.C., married lesbian couple has been ordained to lead that church. How do you explain that? So that's a quick glimpse, right? That's, that's, you guys see how we got to June 2015? Does that make a little bit? It's, it's not like, oh, this kind of snuck up on us. You guys see how we ramped up from 1916 and how things progressively got shorter, the time frames got shorter? So what do we do now? 
I mean, we look at this, we look at this timeline, and it, doesn't it make sense, like, not how did it happen, but how did it not happen? Right? The day after the, uh, the Supreme Court ruling, you can't really see that date right there. This is Saturday, June 27th. That's the New York Times. We're celebrating. Once again, we have to understand this is not about sex. This is about identity. The United States says that I'm worthy. My identity is based in my sexuality. So as we learn to minister, how do we have that discussion? This is the day after that, June 28th. Now's the time to end tax exemptions for religious institutions. If you don't get on board with the sexual revolution, we're going to threaten you with your tax-exempt status. So let's make it really personal. What are you guys going to do with today's sexual revolution? We as the church have not done a very good job of talking about this subject, right? Would you guys agree with that? Have we stuck our, he our, our heads in the sand on this? Yeah, I think these things are coming up with, you know, especially our teenagers at our churches, mm -hmm. and the church is too uncomfortable to bring it up publicly, like, or in a sermon, like, hey, you know, let's, let's look at some relevant topics today. What is God's Word? Through the lens of God's Word, what does it say about gay marriage? What does it say about changing your sex? Mm -hmm. What does it say about gender identity. Mm -hmm. Let's really look at what God says in his word about these things, but we're not. We're not doing that. We want, we want it to go away, so we're just not bringing it up, but our, these teenagers and these kids are, are force-fed it all day long at school, and then, you know, we're not combating it on the other end. I had a, a conversation with an elder of a medium-sized church, and he found out what I did, and he goes, Oh, man, that's great what you're doing. Uh, we have the sex talk once a year, and they think they're doing a good job. Have you ever heard the phrase, the problem is not really the problem? Well, the sexual confusion that's in our culture is not about who we choose to have sex with. It's about rights. And the world says that I can have sex with anyone I want to as long as it's consensual. And oh, by the way, you have to agree and affirm my choice to do so. That's exactly what the retail store Target has said. This is what the NFL and the NBA and the NCAA have also said. This is what the United States military has also said. Wow. So let me ask you this. How are you going to have this conversation with your coworker? Let's make this really personal. Or maybe your child went off to college and now they're, they're back and they don't believe anything that you taught them from a Christian standpoint or a Christian worldview. What are you going to do with that? How are you going to respond? Are you going to get upset and raise your voice and do something that will only push them away? Or are you going to listen to them? Are you going to love them? Are you going to pray and realize that you can't make anybody do or believe anything. It's the Lord that changes hearts. And Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. You see, he's the one that's in the heart transplant business. I'm reminded of what the Apostle Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 6, 9. Don't you realize that those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God? Don't fool yourself. Those who indulge in sexual sin or who worship idols, those who commit adultery or male prostitutes or, or practice homosexuality, or maybe you're a thief or you're a greedy person or you drink way too much, or maybe you're abusive or you cheat people. None of these people will inherit the kingdom of God. And see, when we talk about this issue, we as Christians, we, we love to read a verse like that, don't we? But see, here's the thing. 
We don't read verse 11. We, st we stop at verse 10. And instead of beating people down with the Bible, I would encourage you, let's raise them up. Let's show them where we came from. Because verse 11 says this, Some of you were once like that, but see, you were cleansed. You were made holy. You were made right with God by calling on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and the Spirit of our God. See, changing hearts is the Holy Spirit's job. It's not ours. We only know God's truth and his plan because he revealed that to us. We didn't figure this stuff out on our own. And I pray that you remember that the next time that you start to feel your blood rise when someone disagrees with you on these topics. Lastly, I want you to know that I've just released a new audio series and workbook that specifically addresses porn addiction. It really, it's a bondage is what it is, uh, biblically speaking. It's a slavery to something. Jesus says you, can only, you can't have two masters. You can, you can have money or you can have the Lord Jesus Christ. And we can certainly substitute lust or sexuality or pornography or really anything as one of those masters. But as I've been ministering to people uh, over the past, going on nine years now with God's design for sex, marriage, and the family, they always ask me, how, what do you do? How, how did you do this? And when I went to the Lord, I said, Lord, how do you want me to explain this? And basically this audio series, this devotional is 13 years of people, the church, and then God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, ministering to me. And so it's an individual study, and you can think of this thing as the first chapter in your life to address this porn habit that you've got yourself into. And here's all you do. You, you just simply listen to an audio lesson each day for 35 days. You fill out the workbook, you pray like a madman, and then you let God open your eyes and soften your heart with all of this. So think about it. In just 35 days, you're going to learn God's design for sex, marriage, and the family. You're also going to learn the triggers that lead to porn addiction. Why do you do the things that you do? Why do you have this propensity towards lust? And my suggestion here is to replace your quiet time to figure out those things. And if you don't have a quiet time, man, what a great way to start one with this series. So let me encourage you to order this thing today. You can go to DustinDaniels.org and click on store. See, you don't have to go to a, a Christian bookstore and be embarrassed by buying something. This thing comes directly to your door. You go through it by yourself and then you get the confidence to start asking questions, whether it's a pastor, whether you go to the website and ask me your questions. I would love to answer your questions. So let me encourage you to order this thing today. Go to DustinDaniels.org, click on store, and you'll receive a 20% discount uh, when you type in podcast. Thank you so much for listening to God, Sex, and You. I'm Dustin Daniels. You can follow me on Twitter at Purity Pastor, and you can email me your questions. I would love to hear from you at DustinDaniels.org. The Apostle Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 4.20 that the kingdom of God isn't just a lot of talk. It's living in God's power. And that power, my friend, it is. It's the very name and the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Walk worthy today. I love you, and I'll see you tomorrow.